Sometimes on this journey, I get lost in my mistakes. What looks to me like weakness is a canvas for your strength. And my story isn't over, my story's just begun. And fail you won't define me, cause that's what my father does. Yeah, fail you won't define me, cause that's what my father does.
thank you for your joy, Lord. Yeah. Oh, and freedom reigns in the house of the Lord. Oh, freedom reigns as we dance. Oh, freedom reigns in the house of the Lord. Do you believe that this morning? Freedom reigns as we dance. Say, freedom reigns in the house of the Lord. Freedom reigns in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's give him a big round of applause, Living Waters. How many are happy to be in the house of God today? Amen. I love coming over here. I love being with you guys. Um, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Pastor Freddie, my wife, Marissa Valencia. It is a privilege to be here, but today we are here. Uh, to inform most of you, some of you that don't know, uh, Sister Beth's uh, mom didn't make it over the weekend, and so they had to travel to be with the family. So today, as we go into worship, I want us to pray. Because we love our pastor, and we're living waters, amen? And when one of us mourn, we all mourn. Amen? So I want us to stand, and I want us to pray for our pastors. I want us to pray for Sister Beth, her family. And I want to believe God today, that he is still on his throne, that he is in control. Because we have hope, and we have faith, and we know where her mother is today, amen? So I've asked my beautiful wife, Marissa, to pray, and I want us to all pray together and pray for our pastors this morning. Marissa, help us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, Lord. Right now, Father, you know what Sister Beth is going through. Father, you know what her family is going through. Um, we just thank you for the life of Miss Carolyn. She lived a wonderful life life. She was a, a mighty woman of God. And so, yes, we know where she is today. But there are people that are here that are mourning her loss. Her husband, Miss Beth's children, Micah, Jaden. And we just thank you, God, that, that you're with them. And your word says that you are close to the brokenhearted and that you are there to bind up their wounds. And so, Father, I pray over Miss Beth's heart right now. Father, I pray that where she is, that she feels that you are comforting her because you are the comforter. Father, I pray right now that your presence is poured upon them today, God. I pray that they have an encounter with you. Father, I pray, God, that they may remember every moment with her mom. Father, all the wonderful memories, God, that while
while she is up there and we are here, God, that you are with us, you are with her family, Father, her brothers, her sisters, Father, her children, her grandchildren, Father, where they are right now, God, send your ministering angels to surround them, God, minister to them day and night. Let your presence be poured upon this family in their times of need. Father, I just pray, God, that you do something amazing in this hard time. God, we believe in you. We trust in you. We have faith in you that you can give her peace that surpasses all understanding in this moment of darkness. Father, for Pastor John, that you give him wisdom. Father, you give him guidance. That you strengthen this family like wings on eagles. Father, we know that you are the healer. You are the way maker. Father, you are the comforter. We thank you for your mighty power. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you for this service, Father, and for this family. Be with them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We love you, Living Water. Let's give him a big round of applause. Amen. Good morning, Living Waters. You guys may be seated for a couple of minutes while we go over announcements. Um, I want to thank you guys all for coming to church this morning. We're so happy to see your lovely faces. I want to take a second to thank our Facebook and YouTube audience for, for watching, for tuning in. And I want to ask, do we have any first-time guests? If you want to raise your hand, just wave at me a little bit. Do we have any first-time guests? All right, let's give our first-time guests a round of applause. There are connect cards in the back of the pew, and if you would fill one of those out and place it in the black contribution boxes that are on the wall near your exits, that would be fantastic. Now, you should know our mission statement by now. If you know it, say it with me. It's connecting you to him, him to us, and us to them. You to him is our worship services. Him to us is the spiritual teaching or spiritual training and Bible study. And us to them is connecting with others through outreach and fellowship and serving. Um, if you haven't noticed, a few of us have Living Water face masks. And um, those are for sale. On You can see them on your way in, on your way out. They're only $5, and they're nice and soft. They say Living Waters. They have a scripture on it so that you can use that scripture as a witnessing tool, which is exciting. Another thing that we have going on is on Wednesday nights, we have a Bible study on, we have Bible studies online. Wednesdays at 6, led by Pastor Brewer. We have a, a series titled Stories. And then for our youth students, Shift Youth, we have the streaming service at 6.30 p.m., which is Worship and the Word. Um, both stream on Facebook and YouTube. For our Glow Kids, we have activity packs that you can grab on your way in on the Glow Kids table. They have coloring sheets, crayons, snacks. And then also for the Glow Kids on Saturdays at noon, we have our Glow Kids service, which also has worship, word, interactive videos, and things like that. Um, if everyone could stand, I'm going to read a, a scripture, and we're going to go back into worship. Romans 1.16 says, For I am not ashamed of this good news about Christ. It is the power of God at work, saving everyone who believes, the Jews first and also the Gentiles. Amen. The word of the Lord also instructs us to be ready at any time to give a defense for what we believe. How many of you are thankful for the word of God, for what Jesus did on the cross, for his Holy Spirit? This morning, we're going to sing this song as a declaration of our faith, a stand for what we believe this morning. Let's sing this together. Let's declare it to the world. In this time of desperation, when all we know is doubt and fear, there is only foundation we believe oh come on do you believe oh we believe and in this broken generation when all is dark you help us see oh, there is only one salvation We believe that he 
conquered death. Oh, we believe in the resurrection, and He's coming back again. Oh, we believe. Yeah. Oh, we believe. Oh. So let our songs we sing, oh, and in our weakness and temptation, oh, we believe, yeah, we believe, we believe in God the Father, we believe in Jesus Christ, hey, we believe in the Holy Spirit, and He's given us new life. We believe that he conquered death. We believe in the resurrection. And he's coming back again. Oh, let the lost be found and the dead be raised in the year and now. Let love invade. Let the church live aloud. Our God will save. We believe. We believe. And the gates of hell will not prevail for the power of Torn the veil. Now we know your love will never fail. We believe. We believe. Oh, we believe. Come on, declare it out. Say it. We believe in God the Father. We believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in the Holy Spirit. And He's given us new life. Come on. We believe in the crucifixion. We believe that he conquered death. Oh, we believe in the resurrection. And he's coming back again. Oh, we believe in God the Father. We believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in the Holy Spirit. And he's given us new life. Oh, the crucifixion we believe that he conquered death we believe in the resurrection and he's coming back oh he's coming back again he's coming back again oh yeah he's coming back We believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in the Holy Spirit. Come on, sing it, church. Come on, sing. We believe. We believe in the crucifixion. We believe that He conquered death. Yes. We believe in the resurrection, and He's coming back again. We believe. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. And we wait expectantly for the day that he returns in the clouds to take us with him where he is. Amen. The Bible says that in his father's house are many mansions, and he has gone to prepare a place for his people. Come on, would you lift your hands and thank him all over this building? One day, one glorious day, we'll be with our king forever and ever, and he shall reign on a throne that has no end. Come on, somebody lift your voice and bless him in this place. Come on, thank him that he is king of kings and he is Lord of lords and he rules and reigns forever. Yes, he does. We bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. And salvation is found in no other name. No other name but the name of Jesus. Are you thankful for that name this morning? Are you thankful that in Christ alone, that Christ is enough for me? Come on, would you just lift your hands if you believe that in this place and say, Jesus, you are enough for me. You are enough for me. I count it all as lost just to know you, Lord. Hallelujah. Bless you, Jesus. Bless you, Jesus.
for everything I need. And I have, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. Oh, no turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. follow you with all of our hearts, with all of our souls. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, your strength. Lord, this morning we love you. In Christ alone, we put our trust, put our hope.
thankful for who he is this morning come on are you thankful that our lives are built on him this morning amen we're going to worship the lord with our giving this morning hallelujah how many are ready to bless the lord this morning two people how many are ready to bless the lord this morning did you know that it's a privilege to be able to bless the Lord. I've always said it's better to give than to receive. I think the Bible says that. Is that true? But why do I say it's better to give than to receive? Because I'd rather give than to need. Are you understanding? I'd rather have to be able to bless than to need. And our God is so faithful. Amen? Our God is so faithful that he promises to open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that you cannot contain. Are you ready for that type of blessing? Are you living in that type of blessing? Let me tell you, we have a ministry here. It's called His Compassion, and this church is a great part of His Compassion, where they feed hundreds and hundreds of families every week. This Thursday, 200 families were fed that were in need. Can you imagine the amount of food that was given out thanks to many people like yourselves that are givers? So give yourselves a big round of applause today because God has been faithful that he's given us so that we can bless others. And today we're going to do a missions march and we're going to bless his compassion because his hand is on that ministry and a lot of people in our own community are being part of that blessing and you're part of that blessing today. So I'm going to ask you today, uh, we've got these two baskets on each end of the altars. Uh, please maintain your social distancing, but I want you to come down and be a blessing today. Amen? We're going to feed 200 more families this coming week. Amen? And we're going to see God's windows of heaven open over your lives this week. Do you believe it today? Do you believe it? I'm going to ask him to play something while you guys come and bring your missions march. We're going to pray. I've got a word for you today, Living Waters. You may come and be a blessing today. It's better to give than to receive. All my life you have been faithful. 
Hallelujah. Let us stand and let's pray for our offerings, for our tithes. Let's just give God thanks. Let's give him thanks today that he's been so faithful. Let's thank him that we have to give today. Let's thank him that he's with you, that he loves you, that he hasn't forsaken you. In dark times, he is the closest. Let's thank him today. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for these offerings. We thank you for the privilege of, uh, uh, of presenting you with these tithes and offerings today. And I pray, Father, that it's a, a, a sweet aroma before your throne today. I pray that you bless the tithes, you bless the offerings. I pray that it's that it's a, of great advancement to your kingdom. But I pray for the givers today, God. I pray that you bless them, that you continue to open the windows of heaven, God. We have seen your provision in our homes, in our ministries. We have seen your faithfulness, God, and we are so grateful. We pray, Father, for these offerings, these mission offerings, God, that we have the opportunity to bless others in these times of need. We pray that you just bless these offerings, God. I pray that you continue to, to, to bless these people, God, and, and through these offerings and through, through uh, this special offering, God, that we are able to, to show them your love and how much you love them, God. And I thank you, Father, for using your people today, God. I thank you for using the, uh, the provision that you've given them today, God, to be an advancement for your kingdom, God. And I pray, Father, for many testimonies to come, Father, out of this service today. We thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we all say, amen, amen, amen. You may be seated this morning. Let's give a big round of applause to Justin and this awesome worship team that has taken us to the presence of the Lord. Amen? How many are excited to be in the house of God? How many are ready to receive a word from God? Amen? For those of you that don't know me, I know it's been a while. They don't let me out much. Now, we, um, we're having Spanish service next door. I don't know if you hear our drums or not. Every once in a while, I apologize. No, I really don't. The louder, the better on the other side. But uh, God bless you. It's an honor, a privilege to be here with you today. Um, I've got a word from the Lord for you today. Um, it's for somebody. And I stand in all in the presence of my, our God and trembling. Because it's an on time word in these dark times that we live. If you haven't noticed, 
We're living in the end times. Where time is running out literally. I'm going to say that again. We're living in the end times where time is running out literally. And we as God's people need to be ready. You as a church needs to be ready. And we have faith. Amen. Tell your neighbor, I have faith. But my cry today is not for you. My cry is, is for those that don't have faith. My cry is for those that aren't in the way. My cry is for those that don't have a relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. And before I start, I would like you to open your Bibles. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4. And then we're going to go to Romans 1.17. Then we're going to go to Galatians 3.11. Then we're going to go to Hebrews 10.38. Do we have it? Habakkuk 2.4. The prophet of God. Do we have it? If you have it, say amen. I like my preaching to be interactive. Amen? So if you want to shout amen, go ahead. Okay? If you want to shout hallelujah, go ahead. You're not going to interrupt me. Habakkuk 2.4 says, it says, Behold the proud. His soul is not upright in him. What's he saying? He's saying, look at the proud. They're leaning Right? Behold the proud, his soul is not upright in him. It says, but, say but, the just shall live by faith. Behold the proud, his soul is not upright in him, but the just shall live by faith. Say it with me. The just Romans 1.17 says, the just, help me out. One more time together. The just shall live by faith. Galatians 3.11 says, Hebrews 10.38 says, One time in the Old Testament, three times in the New Testament. Now, this is a verse that we as Christians need to hold down pat. Amen? We need to learn to live by this verse in these dark times when we see the proud who think they are nice and tall and who think they've got it all figured out, but the Bible says they are leaning. They are about to fall. Let me tell you, living waters, we are living in dark times. We are living in uncertain times. We are living in lawlessness of world. And not the world. Let's bring it closer and say we're living in lawlessness of our nation. And, and let's not go to the nation. Let's say we're living in lawlessness in Florida. And we can bring it in closer and say we're living in lawlessness in Marion County. And 
let's bring it a little closer and say we're living in lawlessness in Ocala, Florida. Do you see it? Are we living it? And not only lawlessness, but there's apostasy in the church. Now, more than ever, people are abandoning their faith. They're not living by faith anymore. Now they're living by what they feel and what they see and what they're living. Now we're seeing apathy in the pews. It's okay if I go to church. And it's okay if I don't go to church. It's okay if I watch it on TV or it's okay if I am there present. It's okay if uh, we serve and it's okay if we don't serve. Ouch. That hurt. It's okay if I give and it's okay if I don't give. We are living in uncertain times. And the question that I hear a lot of people asking is, where is God? I hear it every day. Why does God allow this to happen? Why does God allow so much pain? Why does God allow so much suffering? Why does God allow uh, hunger? Why does God allow this? Why does God allow that? Why does God allow the coronavirus? Do you hear it or am I the only one? And Habakkuk was in that place where the, there was uncertainty in the country, where there was perversion, where they were calling that that was bad good and that what was good uh, bad. And he was living in the lawlessness and he was living in the apostasy of the church and he was living in the apathy and the pews and he was, Habakkuk was asking God, God, where are you? Why are you answering our prayers? Why aren't you doing something about all this that's going on around, around us? Nowadays, we have yahoos And they're all experts. One tells you to do it, and another one tells you not to do it. One tells you to hold on, and one tells you to let go. One tells you nothing's going to happen, and the other one tells you the sky's going to fall. That last one was Chicken Little. Favorite movie. But this is what Habakkuk was living. And today, church, if we're not careful, we are in the same place. Do I go out? Do I not go out? Do I stay home? Do I go to work? Do I go to church? Do I not go to church? Do I give? Do I not give? Uncertain times. And I want to look at the book of Habakkuk, and I know I don't have a lot of time, so I'm going to try to, to hurry this up. But, but chapter 1, he, he, he's, he's questioning God and saying, God, why? Why? Where are you? Why aren't you answering? How are you allowing all this to happen? How long must I pray? You see, Habakkuk was a man of God. He was a man who would hear the, the word of God. He was a man who, who was used to the presence of God. He was a man who would walk with God. He was a man who would pray and, and wait for the answers. And God wasn't answering. Habakkuk 1, 2, 3, it says, O oh Lord, how long shall I cry and, and you will not hear, even cry out to you, violence. 
and you will not save. Why do you show me iniquity and cause me to see trouble for plundering and violence are before me? There is strife and contention arises all around me. There are people in that place today that don't understand they don't understand, but you know what the difference is between people that don't understand and give their backs to God and Habakkuk? The Bible says that Habakkuk uh, prayed to God. And let me read to you what he said. After he shouted, after he was asking, after he, he didn't understand what was going on around them, he said, I will say, I will. Stand upon my watch together. I will stand upon my watch and let me upon the tower. And I will watch to see what he will say unto me. I shall answer When I am reproved. What was he saying? He said, God, I don't understand what's going on all around me. There's chaos. There's violence. There's perversion. There's lawlessness. And I don't understand your ways. I don't understand why all this is happening around me. He says, but I will. Stand. I will wait. I will wait for your answer. And I like what he said. And this is where we, we miss the mark sometimes. He says, I will wait. For you to talk to me. I will wait for you to correct me you see many times we pray and we want to give God the answers sometimes we pray and we say God heal me God give me a bigger house God give me a new car God Give me a better job. And we don't understand. But Habakkuk said, I will wait. I will wait on the answer. And not only the answer, but I'm going to wait for you to correct me because I know that my ways are not your ways. I know that my knowledge is not your knowledge. I will. Wait. For you to correct me. Are you receiving it today? Chapter 2. We just read it. The proud. They think they've got it all figured out. Did you know that pride is a universal sin? When we think of pride, who, who do we think of? Who do we think of when we think of pride? People with the rich. Did you know that you can be poor and be very proudful? I've seen it. Let me bless you. No, 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 we're okay. And you know they need it. Let me help you. No, 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 no. I'm not an alcoholic. Let me introduce you. No, 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 no. I don't need Jesus. Did you know that intelligent people think can be proud? 
Did you know that dumb people can be proud of being dumb? We're laughing, but it's true. That's what my mama told me, and that's what it is. And they're proud. Who else can be proud? You know, sick people can be proud. There was a stirring one time for, 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 for this, 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 this man, a, very, a multimillionaire here in Ocala, who has cancer, terminally ill. And one of the one of the one of the the, the, the people from our one of the persons from our church works with him. And she said, uh, "My pastor, she's been healed with cancer, and, and I would like her to come and, and pray for you. And I'm believing that God can do a, a mighty work in you, and He can heal you, and He can raise you. And and I believe that God's not done with you yet." And you know what that man said? I don't need it. I don't need it. My thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are, the way, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. And Habakkuk didn't understand what was going on. And because he didn't understand, he was like, Lord, correct me if I'm wrong. Correct me. Help me to see. Help give me a vision. Give me a new lease in life. And in midst of all the darkness, in midst of all the chaos, in midst of everything that's going on, allow me to see something. And then God answered him. And you know what God's answer was for the chaos and the darkness and the violence and everything that was going on? Do you know what his answer was? He said, I'm going to send the Chaldeans, the Babylonians, and they're going to utterly destroy everything. They're going to rape your, 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 your daughters. They're going to take your children. They're going to take everything. What? That's God's answer? God told him, I've brought judgment. And that's what I'm trying to tell you. We are in the end times where God's judgment is coming to this earth. We are in the times where we need to be watching for the trumpet and the clouds, and we need to be watching for him to come. There is coming a time where the trumpet is going to sound, and if you are not ready... You're not going to fly in the clouds. And if you don't like it, see me after service and I'll forgive you. These type of messages offend people. But I'm not here to make you like me. I'm here to save your soul. I'm here to help you to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. I want to see you fly in the clouds. And, and he tells him, I want you, Habakkuk, here's the answer. And this is where I want to get to. He says, I want you to write it in tablets. And I want you to make it plain as day. Let me read it to you. He said, Write it in the tablets, make it plain as day, so that the people that are going to receive this message. 
will run with the answer. What was the, what was the answer for Habakkuk when, when the times were troubling, when the time was dark, when the world was going to nothing? He said, write the vision down, though you think it may tarry. And it's for the people at a later time. If this word is not an on-time word for now, I do not know what it is. And he says, and they will run with it. What do I want to tell you this morning? And what do, do, do I sense the spirit uh, wanting to tell you this morning? That the answer for Habakkuk was an answer for you. That's why he was saying the proud are leaning and they're about to fall, but the just shall live by faith. Let me tell you, church, to now more than ever, we need to start walking by faith and not by what we feel, not by, by, by what they're telling us, not by what we're seeing, but we need to walk by faith. We need to walk by what the Word is telling us, that the Word says to be truth. He said, write it down and count it as truth. Do you want me to tell you that the answer for Habakkuk was the, the totality of the Word of God? He was telling them, write it down because you are going to see past the, the answer to your prayer. And it's not for you, Habakkuk. It's for the later time when there's going to be a dark time. You think this is bad? Wait, wait, wait. There's going to be a darker time and the church needs to be ready and my people need to be ready because I am coming in judgment. The just shall live by faith. If you could get that in your soul, if you could get that in you, if you could memorize that verse, I will live by faith. Say it with me. Like you mean it. Like you understand it. Like you are living it in dark times. Let me tell you, when you learn to live by faith, that is a powerful and it's the most powerful force on this earth to live by faith. Why? Because you're putting your trust in Jesus Christ and what he did on that cross for you. You're telling all sickness, he has died, he bled, he was what? Resurrected for me. For you. Hallelujah. Do you receive it today? Are you living by faith? That's why we're seeing so many people turn away. Put the microphone down one last time and never picking it up. That's why we're seeing youth, our, our youth, turning to drugs and alcohol. Sexual immorality. Because they're not living by faith. God loves you. Pastor Justin, can you help me? I'm done. He loves you. The answer for Habakkuk's prayer. Was that we need to learn to live by faith. He couldn't do nothing about the judgment that was coming. That wasn't, although that's what he wanted. Bring a revival, bring a savior people, uh, demolish, destroy the Chaldeans, destroy the, the enemy. But God was telling them, it's much more than that. 
Because there, there, there comes a time, there come storms that if we're not living by faith, church, we're not going to survive. If your faith is in material stuff, people put their faith in their jobs, in their stuff. Maybe you put your faith in your husband or your wife or your children, in your health. We spend so much money to go to the gym and then to eat healthy and to eat organic and to eat gluten-free and to eat whole foods. And, and we spend so much money to stay healthy. We're putting our faith in our health. But take away your health. What do you have? Nothing. Take away your bank account. What do you have? Nothing, because you're not living by faith. Take away your relationships. What do you have? Nothing. There's coming a time, church, where we're living in the last days. And I would hate to miss heaven. I would hate to miss the trumpet. Because I'm too proud. Because I couldn't accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Because I couldn't quit doing what I, what I wasn't supposed to do. I went to the junkyard today. This is just a side note. And I went with this young man. His car broke down and he needed help. And I said, I'll help you. Let's go to the junkyard and save some money. And we'll get the parts and we'll put them on for you. And we'll get you on the road and get you working and get you. And I forget a part that he needed. Let's say a headlight. And it was a small little part. And he says, let's put it in the tool bag. They won't miss it. You're right. They're not going to miss a headlight. I said, but if you want me to go to hell with you for stealing a $5 light bulb, put it in the tool bag. And sometimes that's what we don't understand. A little white lie. I would hate to miss it for a white lie. Freddie, did you do the dishes? No. Or yeah. Get pulled over by a police officer. Sir, did you know you were speeding? Was I? I knew I was speeding. Church, time is running out. And he loves you so much, he doesn't want to leave you where you're at. Habakkuk's prayer was for you to understand that in dark times, we need to live by faith. The just shall live by faith. We're not living by what we see, what we have, what we're feeling. We're living by faith. That's good. But the problem is today, and I'm finishing, I'm done. We don't have promises. We don't have promises. If I gave you my credit card and say, go to Amazon and order whatever you want, unlimited, I wish, right? 
But it's not. But if I said here, it's unlimited. Order whatever you want. And you went on Amazon and ordered a, a new car, a new house, new clothes, new shoes, new everything. And you have everything sent to the house. But then you say, you know what? Amazon is taking forever. I, I've got to go to work. I've got to go. You know what? Those packages, Freddie's credit card, that's going to bounce. That didn't go through. Are you going to receive those packages? They're going to knock at the door and you're not going to be there to receive them. And that's what's happening today in these last times. As Christians, we, we, we don't have promises. And that's what Habakkuk was trying to say. We need to cling. In chapter 3, he, said, he, he, says, he, he says, The glory I saw the Lord sitting on his throne, and the glory of the Lord filled the earth, and there's nothing for me to do. There's no complaining. There's no shouting. All I can do is worship my Lord because he is still in control. He has told me time and time again, the just will live by faith, and I need to start living and walking by faith and he said all I can do now is worship him because he is still on his throne and he's got a plan that's what I want to tell you today and I wish that's what you could receive it and live it and, and put it in, the, in the, the most bottom part of your soul that when sickness hits You're going to say, I live by faith. That single mom that has a need, you're going to say, I live by faith. That father who's praying for you, their children, is going to say, I live by faith because I've got my promises placed in him. That mother who's praying for her house, you're going to say, I live by faith. Is that you today? I'm going to ask you to stand. And I'm going to pray a prayer. And if that's you, that God is telling you to live by faith, why worry? Why try to fix what he's already said is going to happen? We need to learn to trust in him. If that's you today, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. Jesus, I trust in you. Save me. Jesus, I don't have the answer. Correct me if necessary, like Habakkuk said. Correct me. My ways are not your ways. We're living in dark times. Give me the strength. Let me be light. Right now, church, that's you. He's calling you, church, to live by faith. The answer to your prayers. He wrote them down a long time ago. In the book of Habakkuk, he said, make them plain. Make them so that they can understand. Because when they receive this word, he told the prophet, they will run. When they receive this word, they are going to run with the word. Run with the promise. Run with the power of the Holy Spirit. There's a promise in here that says that in the latter days, the Spirit of the Lord will fill all flesh. And it says our old men will dream dreams. And our children will prophesy. I don't know if you believe that promise, but I believe that promise. 
I believe that I'm going to see dreams. I believe that God's going to put promises in me that I'm going to run with them because I'm living by faith. I'm not living by what I see. I'm not living by what the government is doing. I'm not living about who's winning the election. I'm living by the almighty God who still sits on his throne. Can I get an amen? You're starting to understand, living waters. The just shall live by faith. Now, do you want me to tell you what the Habakkuk means? It means to cling, to hold on to. And that's what God's calling you to do in these dark times because I know that he is not done with you I know that there are promises that have not come to pass in this place I came to this church a sinner lost 10 years ago And when I met him, he brought me to this place. Because he's got greatness for this place. And it has nothing to do with the building. It has to do with you. It has to do with your children and your children's children's children. And I'm telling you this for the first time. I've never shared it with anybody. I remember I was lost. And I started walking with Jesus and I started seeking him and I started believing the promises. And you know what he told me? I didn't believe it. And I always kept it to myself. But he says, Freddie, right here on this altar, you're going to see the dead raised. Not that I'm going to do it. But that God has something special for this place. Is that literal? I don't know. Is that spiritual? I don't know. But I did hear him say when I was seeking God, when I was looking for him, when I was saying, guide me. He says, in this place, you will see the dead rise. I have promises and I am living by faith till I see those promises come to fruition. Do you? Now there's a lot more history than 10 years here. What are your promises? What are your promises? I've probably gone way over my time and they'll probably never invite me back, but that's okay. But God is speaking. And what I want you to do, I want you to write them down. Whatever it is, I want you to take out on your Bible. Write down your promises on a piece of paper, on an envelope. Write down your promises. That's what he told Habakkuk. Make it plain so that everybody understands. And you will see my glory because you are living by faith. You are living by faith, living waters. Write it down. You've got homework. I don't care how crazy it may sound. big and man I don't care how old how young God has a purpose God is still in control God can still do miracles and he wants to use you let's bow our heads close our eyes believing believing his promises Dream big, living waters. If 
you would have asked me 10 years ago, one day you're going to preach, I would have told you you were nuts. Dream big living waters. With God, all things are possible. Dream big for that business. Dream big for your children. Dream big for your grandchildren. Dream big for those that are lost because you are living by faith and that is a powerful weapon here on earth. Dream big. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this word. Father, forgive us of our pride. Forgive us, Father, if, if we are fried, prideful people. And like Habakkuk prayed, Lord, correct us if necessary. What does that mean? He may tell you, forgive. He may tell you, forgive your neighbor, forgive your sister, forgive your pastor. Forgive your brother, forgive your mother, forgive your son, forgive. We're going to do what you tell us. Thank you for everything that you're doing, God. Father, you've got greatness in this place. Everybody hear God. We are living by faith. The just will live by faith and we're waiting on you, God. And we will stand and wait on your answer. We will stand and wait on your promises. And we thank you today, Father, for this service. Bless your people. Pray for our, uh, I pray for our pastors, God, that you give them the strength, God. You give them the peace that surpasses all understanding, God. And let them know, God, that, 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 that she's in a better place. And one day we're all going to rejoice together, God. And we're all going to be in glory with you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for everything that you're doing. Bless your people today. Give them dreams. Give them visions. Give them an, a new hope. Give them an, 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 everything that they need, Father, to be able to, to pass through these dark times, to be able to understand, God, to be able to, 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 to be a light in this dark world, God, to be an example. I thank you, Lord. Father, we dismiss this service, but never from your presence. Go with us, bless us, use us in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. And everybody says, everybody says, let's give him a big round of applause. Those that are living by faith. He's coming with power and glory to this land. You may, God bless you. We love you. If you need special prayer, I'm going to put on my mask. I'm going to sanitize my hands and then I'm going to anoint 